So I did a video on Monday about the M drive, the controversial M drive, and it set people into a bit of a tizzy. I got about 50 comments in the first hour, and I knew that I was going to have to respond to this in some way because 90% of the comments were some uh, variation of the title of this video. So I just wanted to take a minute and respond to some of the comments and feedback that I got from the video because uh, I got a lot. So first things first, I got called out quite a bit for having gone a bit into clickbait territory with uh, the headline of the video. And I did, I definitely did. This is not something I normally do. Actually looking back, I haven't really gone into clickbait territory with any titles for any of my videos. But, uh, you know, and I almost didn't with this one, but I just thought, you know, why not give it a try? So I did, and you know what? I'm gonna be honest, I'm not gonna apologize for that because I got a ton of views out of this. But I don't know if it's because of the content or the uh, subject matter or because of the headline that I used, but the, the title got a lot of feedback. It is important to me that this channel grows and that I get, you know, views and get new subscribers. I got a lot of new subscribers on Monday because of this. I lost a few people, but I gained a lot more, so <laughs> I can't really uh, cry about it and I can't really apologize because it worked and it's growing the channel and I'm, I'm always facing this sort of catch-22 where people are constantly telling me that my channel needs to grow, my channel should be bigger, but then when I do the things that I need to do to grow my channel, it always upsets somebody. So, so the lesson learned here is always, somebody's always gonna be pissed off, so I might as well just do what I need to do to grow the channel, and if that means every once in a while dipping into some more clickbaitish territory, then I might have to do that. So, sorry. Why did I say sorry? I said I wasn't gonna apologize. Another comment that I got a lot was I got a lot of people telling me that I need to go and watch Thunderfoot's video on this because he totally debunked it and totally disproved it, and I'm gonna feel like an idiot once I watch it. Um, those people clearly didn't look into the description of my video because I shared Thunderfoot's video in the description. Thunderfoot made a good video. I thought he made a lot of really good points. A lot of them were ran very counter to what I was saying, but I don't own stock in M Drive or anything. I don't have any skin in this game. I just find it to be an interesting subject, and I totally welcome opposing views. That's why I shared the video. Now I will say, and I'm not trying to start beef with Thunderfoot here or anything, he has a great channel, I've watched lots of his videos, he does really great work. Uh, I don't totally agree with everything he said on his M Drive video. For instance, he spends a lot of time on his video debunking some of the crazy claims that Roger Shawyer, the guy who kind of came up with the concept for M Drive, has made in interviews, and rightfully so. He's made some pretty wacky uh, assertions about things that M Drive can do, and M Drive is not, at its current state anyway, capable of doing anything remotely close to the things that Roger Shawyer has been saying, and he should be called out for that. But that guy didn't do this experiment, and his crazy claims have absolutely nothing to do with this particular experiment, the paper from which NASA put through peer review and it passed. Like, those two just have nothing to do with each other as far as I'm concerned. Another thing that he did in the video was he kind of just wrote off the whole thing the fact that it passed peer review as just NASA trying to make headlines. Now, I'm not gonna say that isn't what happened here. I don't know, that's always possible. I think he probably travels in the scientific community more than I do, so he might have seen that happen before and knows that that's the kind of thing that goes on. Totally possible, I don't write that off at all, um, but it really just seems to me like to just, to just write off the fact that NASA put this through peer review as, oh, they're just trying to make headlines. Um, I don't know, that seems to me like a really convenient way to just do away with something that doesn't jibe with your worldview. I mean, where I stand on this, honestly, this is all, all it boils down to for me, is basically like, let's just let the research happen. Like, all this really means that it went through peer review is that, that they're gonna be doing more tests on it. NASA is gonna be doing more tests on this engine to try to figure out if it does actually work in better conditions. I think there's actually plans to put one up in space uh, to the space uh, station and see what happens there. Um, but they're gonna do more tests on it. Good, I think we should do more tests on it. We should find out whether it works or not and if it works, how it works. Like it just, it just always really bothers me whenever people shoot down an idea at the concept stage without letting it go through the process of determining whether or not it works. That to me isn't science. That's just skeptical dogma. But I don't, I don't think you can do that because every scientific and technological breakthrough we have ever had has come from somebody being able to do something or prove something that was previously undoable or unprovable. 
And so to just write off something as, well, this isn't, this isn't in accordance to our current understanding, science can never move forward if you don't push through that. And this might turn out to be a giant flop. For every breakthrough, there's a million flops. And this might be one of them. But you have to go through those flops in order to find the breakthroughs. If you just shut things off at the concept stage and say, no, 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 you can't test this, it's not true, it can't work, then you're, you're not any better than religious fundamentalists, in my opinion. One thing that some people did bring up was something called the Casimir effect, which I did not include in the video, um, but you guys can go do some research yourselves and find out more about that. One person even went so far as to say, if you don't know what the Casimir effect is, I'm afraid of you. If that's your threshold, then you're gonna be terrified for a big part of your life. Something else I got called out for quite a bit was I did mention at one point in the video that this could possibly be some kind of a perpetual motion machine if done in the right way. Uh, I probably should have been called out for that. Perpetual motion, the idea of it is something that makes everybody that works in any science field just makes them, their hair on the back of their head stand up. And it probably was not used in an appropriate way the way I said it, in fairness, because uh, it, it's not something that doesn't require energy. It still requires energy to make the microwaves bounce around inside the thing, and you're basically running a microwave oven, so it does require energy to do that. And something up in space, a big wheel like I was talking about, would probably need to get all of its energy from solar panels. So it still has energy coming in, and it's probably still using more energy uh, coming in than going out in the beginning anyway. Eventually you might get enough momentum together to where you could use that momentum to generate more energy, but I am not an in, uh, engineer, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. It was probably a poor use of it on my part, so I'll, 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 I'll swallow that one. I had a few different people point out that the power it would take to lift a 200 pound man with an M drive would be all the power in the world. I don't know where this came from, but several people have latched onto it, and I don't know why it's being directed at me because I never said anything remotely close to that. I'm sure everybody who commented that thinks that I feel really silly right now. I feel silly for lots of reasons, but not that one because I never said that. I don't know why it's being directed at me. And I did have somebody, an eagle-eyed observer, point out that I have a giant mark on the side of my face that you could see when I turned around in my chair. Uh, I am actually right now in the middle of doing a skin treatment for precancerous sun damage that I got when I was a kid. Wear sunscreen, people. Uh, it's really nasty and gross. I'll give you a quick look at it. There you go, and that's all you're going to see. It's awful. It's nasty. I can't wait for this to be done with. Uh, today's actually the last day that I'm putting the stuff on there, so over the next week or so. It will heal, but I'm okay. Anybody else who noticed it, I'm okay. kind of sucks, but I'm okay. I should be telling people I joined Fight Club or make some kind of cool story out of it. Wrecked my Harley. And of course I had the requisite person telling me how tired I look, which I, I love getting those. It's called getting older, people. Anyway, I just wanted to respond to those things real quick and now I'm done and now I'm signing off. You guys go out there and have a great time and uh, catch you later.